Hi there. Today's topic, we're going to take a look at stem and leaf diagrams. And I'm going to show you how to draw a stem and leaf diagram and then make some interpretations from it. So let's crack on with the example. So here we have a data set and it's the scores of a class test and we're asked to arrange it in an ordered stem and leaf diagram. So it's quite a large set, so a stem and leaf diagram is a nice way to represent this data set and then use that representation to answer these questions below. Now the very first thing we must do is decide on a key and that just explains how we read our stem and leaf diagram. So if I choose for example 21 and I say 2 with this line here 1 means 21 that just tells whoever views the stem and leaf diagram exactly what it means. So for example suppose we had something like this we had data sets using I don't know 2.1 2.3 etc I could say the 2 with the line and a 1 means 2.1 so it just it just explains to whoever views the stem and leaf diagram how to interpret it right so I'm going to start out by uh, finding the smallest digit which in this case is 5 and I'm going to put that in my stem and leaf diagram now I'm going to put a 0 here and a 5 here because according to our key whatever is to the left of the line is the tens and whatever is to the right are the units so we got 0 tens and 5 units I'm going to add in the 7 so I just add a 7 here again that means 0 7 uh, moving swiftly along we've got 12 so I'm going to put a 1 here and a 2 here next smallest is 17 crossing that off add a 7 here we got 17 again put another 7 here next is 19 so we put a 9 here another 19 and so on and so forth right the way through all the data set crossing them off as you go to make sure that you've you, you have all the data in your diagram and you'll end up with something like this so here's our stem and leaf diagram uh, everything to the left of this line here is the stem and over here these green numbers are our leaves Right, now we want to use our stem and leaf diagram to answer these questions. So I want to work out what the range is, and if you've looked at my previous video, the range is the biggest value, take away the smallest value. Make sure that we interpret our stem and leaf diagram correctly. So it will be 48, take away 5, 48, take away 5, leaves us with 43. The mode is the most common a data point in our set and if we have a quick scan through our data set I can see that there is no mode and uh, we've got a couple of data points that appear twice 31 appears twice 32 36 37 38 but nothing actually uh, appears uh, more than anything else so I'm going to say there's no mode uh, the median uh, is found just like we would with a list of data I want the middle data point and again if you've looked at my previous video what I like to do is count all the data points I've got 30 data points that means the middle one will between will be between the 15th and 16th data point so let's count along 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 so the middle data point is in here somewhere so what data point would be between 32 and 35? If I add them together, 32 plus 35, that gives me 67. If I divide 67 by 2, I get the median. 67 divided by 2 is 33.5. So 33.5 is our median. Now I want the interquartile range. The interquartile range I've explained before is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile and to find the upper quartile basically what I want is the median of everything 
to the right of the median. So that was my median there. I'm going to work out the median of this data set here, which I'll highlight for you in yellow. So I want the median of this data set here. Right. So to the right of the median, we've got 15 data points. And the middle data point of that set would be the eighth. So counting long, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the leaf, that's the stem. So the 39 is the upper quartile. And I'm gonna take away the lower quartile, which will be the median of everything to the left of the median. So this part here. So again, we have 15 data points to the left of the median. So if I count eight along, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 21 is the interquartile range. 39, take away 21, is 18. And just confirming our answers there. Another thing that's maybe worth noting is the stem and leaf diagram actually allows us to visualize the shape of the distribution really nicely. So if you actually take a look at this distribution, I'm gonna I'm gonna spin it around and we can see the kind of the shape of what it looks like. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So we fit it in. So we can see that the distribution has this sort of shape. Kind of tends to come up here and back down. So it's actually kind of skewed to the right. Um, and that's more or less everything you need to know about stem and leaf diagrams. So I'm gonna give you a question to try. So if you pause the video and see if you can draw the stem and leaf diagram for this data set and answer the questions below. Right, so there's your solutions. Um, mark it off, hopefully you managed to get it right. And that's stem and leaf diagrams. I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you, you found it useful. And uh, I'll see you again sometime.